While we slept, nocturnal animals began their day. Plants used their energy storage from photosynthesizing. They grew. Mushrooms emerged from the soil. We rejuvenated. A recurring period of time where Earth and the life that exists outside of our home can engage while we lay asleep. I enjoy at least eight hours of sleep, wake to soft alarms, which has become easier the more sleep that I get, and I rise with the sun. The morning is buzzing with life, with creatures that had an earlier start, riding the morning dew, what's left of a soft night rain, securing their winter storage of nuts and seeds, greeting the wind in the highest of spaces, dancing with their companion, and stepping into the day with courage. When I sit still and witness the absolute beauty in each individual life, their choices, their expression, it's difficult not to cry, so I often do. I begin my days with these observations in stillness, and it allows me to move through life with consideration and appreciation for all life. My prayer before I leave bed. May my life become a living prayer, setting to motion my hopes, desires, dreams, and wishes this body, a vessel for compassion, empathy, unity, harmony, and love. In my walk, in my contribution, may I continue to deflate the inflated ego that prevents me from my highest potential and holds central to my core, oneness. Remembering that I am everything, everything is me, and my existence here is an opportunity to nestle into this vast moving picture rather than conquer and control it. I think about how some life forms entire natural lifespan is in this single day, how much they will experience in this one day, what leaves they may grace, and how their tiny footprint is just as significant and worthy as mine. The story of such an insect may be short to us, but we can learn so much from it. The morning is overwhelming in the best of ways. A daily reintroduction to the enormity that we are a part of like billions, trillions of hugs all at once that remind me I am alive, I am here. First thing out of bed, I drink room temperature water. Our bodies are mostly water and hydrating is really important. I always take a reusable bottle with me everywhere that I go when I'm out of the house. And before my morning walk, I engage with my body, with touch. I used to jump out of bed, fast moving, and now I wake up earlier to give myself time to ease into the morning, my body, my rhythm for the day. I touch my legs, my knees, my arms, my feet get love. Massaging this area relates back to mental health, stress reduction, immune benefits, and then I give love to the crown of my head, stimulating blood flow, waking me up, relieving tension. There's many benefits to massaging the head, like hair growth, easing headaches, and even memory. I splash my face with cold water and I head out to one of the most incredible walks. Texas is entering winter and I'm bundled up for these walks. Sometimes I'm out on this hike before the sun rises and other times just after it comes up over the horizon. Even if I only have time for a quick step outside to my backyard, morning in the elements is daily medicine. When I lived in an apartment, I created a small terrace for plants and convened with them in the mornings. A reconnect with nature in the mornings can look so many ways, and it's beautiful because it's all around us. I take this walk often, and as the seasons shift, I love to watch land just be. Leaves that have served their purpose to this beautiful tree, falling to the ground, becoming a vital part of another life form story. These fallen leaves left unbothered to give ground cover for the coming cold weather, a place where insects and small animals can seek shelter, make a home. Because we live in homes with walls that block out the elements' reach, it's important that I attune myself to Earth's natural cycles, even when indoors. In the mornings when I rise with the sun, it feels so right to just sit and watch. A moment to feel the progression of the sun's warmth on my skin. A reminder that what the sun brings to us, the way it makes us feel, we have this capacity with our words, thoughts, hearts, and existence. In all aspects of life that we've become so accustomed to, the things that are autonomic and cyclical, like the sun rising every day, or our heartbeat, breathing, I consciously bring awareness to them in my day. 
thank you for the light. Thank you for this body. And thank you for breath. How grateful I am that these elements showed up to support and make possible another day of experiences, growth, and life. My morning face ritual is simple. I used to suffer from PCOS and endometriosis. Cystic acne was a symptom for me. Since treating these imbalances holistically not only has my skin healed, but my entire body feels tended to. I'm creating an entire video on my journey with PCOS, endo, hormonal imbalances, becoming connected to my body and my cycle, stress, and more. I've been wanting to make this video for such a long time since I understand the depths in which these imbalances can affect our lives. So I'll see you on that episode. So in the mornings, I use organic witch hazel first, a few spritz, feels so good, raw organic shea butter, and a face oil by my friend Jackie. She's a human with so much to give, and if she were an oil, this would be her. <laughs> She knows the body very well and made this delicious oil that I use every day. She makes a small batch in her home and continues to bless me with her creations. This formulation has ingredients like aloe vera oil, sea buckhorn, rose oil, rose hip. I link Jackie and her shop in the description for you. The first solid I eat is usually a fruit, berries, an apple, whatever I have on hand. Most days, coconut yogurt too. This is usually the time when Ish's pal William comes to visit from next door. They sit next to each other before it's too cold for Ish and she comes back inside. On the topic of cats, how do you feel about lab-grown food, for cats specifically? I'd love to hear your thoughts. With four cats, vacuuming and sweeping floors is an everyday task. A light cleaning in the morning churns feelings of productivity, boosts happy chemicals in the brain, and gives me an early morning accomplishment. By this time, I'm warming up and getting ready for movement and I begin with breath work, conscious, controlled breathing. Through this practice, I connect to an area of myself that deserves so much love and attention. I'm mending years of childhood trauma, rewiring my stress responses, reminding my body I no longer have to be in survival mode, and encouraging myself to become aware of breath. Breath work attunes me to myself, the world around, within me, and the intrinsic bodily rhythm that can be unlocked when we sit with ourselves. I've listed a few links for guided breath work and meditation. Hope you enjoyed those. I used to really believe that a measure of a good day, a good life, was if I was happy all of the time. <laughs> Astronomical levels of positivity, big smiles, high energy, and while that is all a part of my life, I'm content more than I am anything else. A peaceful state of happiness, its seemingly milder cousin, that is the space my mind, body, soul, spirit thrive in. I'm finding and have found the beauty and the calm, the still moments in between, which has been a catalyst for not feeling like I need to be hyper-stimulated or hyper-stimulating all of the time. From a place of content, I've reset the bar for gratitude. I'm just so grateful for the elements I used to breeze over. Breath, my heartbeat, warmth, simple nourishing meals, the senses, like the music that's playing here. If I had to choose one song for the rest of my life, as I glided over time and space, it would be something like this. Just enough, just right, nothing more, nothing less. I flip through my personal Spotify playlist to find a song that feels right to the morning, and I move with freedom, whatever feels true. I love to see people express freely and choreographed. Sometimes I'm here for a bit, and other times I shimmy in and I shimmy out. I love to stimulate my scalp, and when I dry brush, I notice I have far less fallout. I brush to each side, straight back, and then back to front with my head upside down, stimulating all areas of my head. And then right before breakfast, I convene with adaptogens. Today is lion's mane, omega-3, and then a B-complex vitamin. I'm going to deep dive into these and many other supportive herbs and supplements in my PCOS endo hormonal balancing video. I also thrive on a warm, hearty breakfast, especially in the winter. So today I had a homemade vegetable curry soup with wild rice. This recipe is a blend of curries and soups on my website, Elbows on the Table. If you'd like to see more hearty breakfast meals, let me know. The garden has been so green with all of the rain we've been getting. It's so beautiful. Even though Nyla and Ish aren't running right now, we always run together. I think they knew the camera was there. <laughs> they wouldn't run with me. Watching them enjoy soil under their feet, sniffing the brisk air, it's so very much a part of my ritual. My kitty companions thrive on touch with each other, with me. 
We check in all day with each other and are really just one big moving organism. I go grab a pair of socks, we do it together. I organize my spice cabinet, we do it together. Life Forest is most potent when fresh picked and we're blessed to have this American Beauty Berry shrub in the yard. They're such a pretty purple and have a mild sweetness. The simple act of moving through a space, our home, it feeds the subconscious. And every day, passing by my old books, art I've had since I was a child, these expressions of who I am and what I love, they nourish me on so many levels. I'm warmed up, it's still early, and this is usually the time that I'll take my phone off of airplane mode. I brew some Tulsi tea, easing into responding to messages, checking notifications, emails. I'm still in the process of relaying to people in my life that I don't feel called to communicate through text all of the time. And I still love them. <laughs> I used to apologize for it, but I realized if I answered every message in a meaningful way, I'd be on my phone all day. I started to convey this part of myself to manage expectations and it's been very helpful if you needed that tip. I also decided to turn off the mainstream news a while ago. My thoughts, this kind of news is constructed in a way to keep us fearful, divided, distracted, and also delivers some very real things simultaneously to keep us coming back. A strong source I use to keep informed is with tip news, a quick daily news brief delivered straight to my email inbox news without using my emotion as a pawn. About 90% of what we read is controlled and in the hands of such a small few. Industries, billionaires. What's the masses questioning such influences? An even stronger power. I link tip news in the description for you if you're interested, it's free. Touching, love, laughing every day. Child Patrice and child me play all of the time. <laughs> It's as if I'm making up for the 27 years before finding him. My work days are spent tending to our vintage clothing shop called Test of Time Vintage Co. You can find us on Etsy. We built this business together and we're really proud of it. This month we've expanded our team to four. It's a blooming little fern. We're in such a technological society that continues to weave itself with the advancements that happen every day. For as fast as things can move in this world, I want to shine a light on the beauty in a slower pace too. One that feels right, one that feels nourishing, one that reflects your nature. I had a friend tell me she was worried that her desires in this life were minuscule. She felt like what she truly wanted couldn't be enough. When I asked her what she saw for her life, aside from outside pressure, she said, crafts, a small business from home, an herb garden, animals, a slower life, and she said this with a tinge of shame, as if all of those things weren't enough, weren't worthy. I wonder what life could and would look like if we gently stepped off of the hamster wheel to tune in with ourselves. The effort we put into building complex systems that we call progress, if we granted ourselves this level of effort, hours, energy, intention, Maybe the very things we're building externally could be satisfied internally if we tried. We may no longer desire to create artificial worlds to escape into if we cherished, loved, and felt safe in this one here. We may no longer desire to build and send off a rocket ship to the stars because we found the galaxy within. I don't claim to have the answers. I'm expressing a perspective that is surely not a new one. We're all just finding our note in a symphony that was happening before we came here and will continue long after. In this world, I just wish for us to know, believe and trust that we, our pace, our contributions are enough. My friend, her dreams, they're enough. Abundantly so. Thank you for being here. Until the next one.